C'est dans la petite ville de Yaleville, dans le comté de Somerset, dans le sud-ouest de l'Angleterre, que le jeune Bruce Orr, en 1999, sortit son premier album pour son projet solo, The Pineapple Thief, ou le voleur d'ananas dans la langue de Molière. C'est après avoir formé un véritable groupe et signé chez K-Scope que le quartet accède à la renommée. Nous avons rencontré Bruce Sorrell après son concert à la Maroquinerie pour promouvoir leur dernier album, All The Wars. Ok, thank you and hello Bruce. Hello. Uh, first of all, it's your, uh, you, you just come off the stage in uh, Paris. How was uh, that gig? I, I can say this without exaggerating, that the, the Parisian crowd was just unbelievable. I've, I, I've never experienced that kind of atmosphere in any gig that we've played before and so uh yeah it was it was it was wonderful and having been um doing the pineapple thief for so long and never playing paris um this is actually this is our third ever gig in france to see all the people come out was uh was really encouraging so i'm very pleased very happy okay can you tell me a little more about the actuality of uh, the pineapple thief The activity now, or like um, yeah, the actuality is uh, for now. What uh, what what's happening in uh, what's happening for now in a uh, pineapple thief uh, world? Now, so so what's happening at the moment is we're um, we're doing this small tour. So um, we played in Bordeaux last night and Paris tonight, and three gigs in Holland um, over the next next couple of days. And um, the idea is that it. it surprising that a lot of people look at the panel and think oh a relatively successful band but really hard to get gigs in in france so we've come here tonight and i think we people will see that all the people that came out to see us and the reaction we got that the idea now is that we come back next march and do a full set and a lot more gigs and um so that's the plan because the the album or the wars came out two months ago And we just want to tour. We want to gig and, and get out and see our fans. Really, that's that. That is what's driving us at the moment. Okay, um, can you tell me um, about the concept and the spirit of your band? Well, the, yeah, the concept has always been really. I have to say this is is that it's because I, I, I write all the songs, so it's really it comes from my soul, as I, I suppose is the, the best way of putting it. But um, it's. That all the songs are based on experiences. I think if you look back on the nine albums that we've done, it's really an auto autobiography of of my life and the things that I witness and experience. And so the the new album, All the Wars, is is very much about um, the last 18 months of my life and um, the, the, the and that's that that is the spirit because i couldn't possibly write about anything that i don't know about that i don't know closely about and uh, i couldn't go up there like i did tonight and sing sing my heart out in front of all these people like without if i didn't if i couldn't feel it in you know really in the heart and and, and that's why it has to be about things that are close to me And for that reason, I do make the lyrics quite abstract. Otherwise, it would just be too weird, you know. So it's it's always been a contradiction. The fact that you go on stage and and wear your heart on your sleeve, and so. But that is the spirit of the Pineapple Thief. Okay, and uh, tell me why the Pineapple Thief? The name. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like when the Pineapple Thief started in 1999. Um, I had no idea that I'd be talking to you, what, 13 years later and in Paris. It was it was just an idea at, at home, in my home studio, and I, I did one album because the label that I won, uh, was on at the time, a tiny, tiny label, said, yeah, I'll put that out. And he said, well, I need a name. And I said, well, I've got a name. So I was watching a film and there's a, called Eve's Bayou, and there's a, a very small independent American film, and there's a scene where a, a little girl steals a pineapple, thi uh, steals a pineapple, and the, this voodoo lady says, I can see you, pineapple thief, and and, and I said, oh, yeah, pineapple thief, that, that'll do, yeah, let's, let's call it pineapple thief, this little project, it's probably only going to be one album, and um, and it's still here, and we, we did change it to the pineapple thief halfway through, because people kept, because it's PT and obviously porcupine tree it, we, and I, I'm fed up of being PT, PT, you know, and, and so, so we're now TPT, so that's, that's the reason. 
Okay, um, speaking about uh, Porcupine Tree, you're on a label named K-Scop. Mm. Can you tell us a little more about this label? Yes, I think when we moved to K-Scope in 2007, and that was because Stephen Wilson put in a good word for us, because um, we'd released six albums on a very small label before that, and Stephen Wilson heard it and emailed me and said, you, you need to get off this label, you need to get on to a, something that's going to get you out there. And, um, and when we were signed, K-Scope didn't exist. And I remember them, at the time, they had um, all the Blackfield and the Pork Pine Tree back catalogue before an Absentia, I think it was, and Anathema. And so they had a progressive, a, a new progressive and a, a, a great um, a catalogue of bands, but didn't have a label. And um, I remember the, the director there saying, right, right, Bruce, we're going to sign you and we're going to start this new label that's going to really push progressive progressive music called K-Scope. And it was a real privilege, really, to be the first first band on there. And what is it, four or five years later? You know, K-Scope, I think, is probably the most important progressive label in the world, I think, now. And so it's a, it's great, great to be on there, you know, with with, with the other bands that, that we're with is... is, is been the biggest the single biggest thing that has pushed us up and i know that a lot of fans come up to me and say I, i've only ever heard of you since 2008 you know when someone who was missing came out because it because of the power of k-scope really okay and uh, about progressive music there are many um sub uh, labels and uh, names uh, what do you think about this uh the, the progressive it's just ridiculous because it's as, as as wide as that you know it's like one end you've got you know symphonic metal and extreme and really technical stuff like the dream theater and the other end you've got really um dreamy stuff like um Marillion, um and gazpacho and to a point the recent anathema output and and you know you can't compare an anathema album with dream theater but they're still progressive bands and i think I think um, the good, the brilliant thing about progressive now is that you can say you're a progressive band without being late, but without people saying, "Oh, well, you, you're Emerson, Lake and Palmer, you're Yes, you're Genesis, or whatever," because that's what people used to say. And now it's like, "Oh no, there's a new movement. There's Porcupine Tree. There's Nathma. There's Opeth. There's there's all kinds of really exciting bands doing really interesting albums." That I think what I've noticed is that all um, the range of, of, of demographic from young, young kids to old, old people, you know, well, I say old people, but, you know, right through the range, are getting into it because they're bored of the, the same old four-minute pop, rock, or whatever it is, and, and they want something that's a little bit deeper and a little bit more interesting. So, yeah, it's like, I remember five years ago, I probably wouldn't, the sad progressive because uh, because that's a dirty word and but now you can I can say yeah it's progressive is fine so it's a, it's a it's a good scene so the future is uh, bright for uh, progressive music definitely definitely really bright and uh, I've in the UK it's really taking off because um, you can see the circulation of the progressive magazines that, that focus on that on that is uh, they're, they're going right up when the the mainstream rock um, uh, uh, circulation is going down and uh, and I just personally I just feel a passion for the f when what I, lo I love about playing with the Pineapple Thief is that yeah we don't play to huge crowds but the crowds that we get are so passionate and they all know the stuff and they you know and you see them afterwards and they're like they're holding the album and they're like oh you know it's, it's just and it's just I'd rather that than play to 10,000 people that don't know your name, you know, it's, 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 it's a privilege, really. So, um, what's your um, best tour or gig memory? Well, to be honest, tonight was up there. It yeah. Was, yeah, it was beautiful. I mean, I, I know that it was it's certainly not the biggest crowd we played to, but it was the most passionate, that, that, you know, the, the fact that we went on and everyone was clapping and cheering and... Uh, it was, it just makes you feel like, well, God, it really, it really, that all this, all these years that I've been writing these songs, people are listening and they're li not just listening and going, yeah, they're all right. They're listening to it and thinking, I love this stuff. And I could, and on stage, you're looking at all the faces and you're looking at how they just, they know and they know every song. And um, 
it was yeah it was uh, you talked to the to the other three guys in the band and we came off stage and it was a real shame because we couldn't do an encore um but it was like we were coming off going what because we haven't played um paris before and it was you know it was it was great and um i think and obviously there were other times you know when you go through your career we, we started off playing really grimy little pubs in you in england and tiny black holes to 10 people and and uh, driving 200 miles back after doing a terrible gig and and i think the first time that we ever came out of the pub and into a venue was when we played in a place called breeder in the netherlands and uh we we were playing to 300 people there and and we had a dressing room and we had beer in the fridge and <laughs> and it was like wow this is amazing you know and uh and that was the point where we we t we became a band as opposed to just a bunch of guys making music and it was it, and ever since then it, we sort of never that was the the turning point really and so um what what's your worst memory <laughs> <laughs> we've had quite a few disasters i mean we we did um we did a gig in poland uh and we got the times wrong we we turned up to our flight home 12 hours late and the f the airport was actually shut and um uh and so that was a that was pretty bad because we 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 ended up having to blow about three thousand euros on flights back and and uh yeah that that was pretty depressing because we were all really happy because we'd made loads of money on merchandise and then we missed our flight home which was pretty depressing <laughs> But I think one of the worst, yeah, I th it's, you sort of grow. I, I don't look back on any of the disasters and think, oh, that's a terrible memory, because we every bad gig or every bad moment we've learned from. Um, I remember playing Laurel Life um, Festival. Um, uh, it's a pro progressive rock festival, and it was a disaster. You know, it, it, things went wrong, and my guitar went, keep the lead broke, and the strap fell off, and it was, you know, and it was... We look back on that and we learn from it. And now, you know, we like tonight we had a couple of problems, but it's easy to deal with because we've we've had all those problems before, so we know how how to how to work around it. So I don't I don't look back on any any of any moment in our history and think, yeah, that was a dark moment. I'm just glad that we've f fought through it and we're we're here still here really. Okay, um, you met. Uh Several albums. What what do you prefer to to play music live or to mm. record? I I don't think you can compare. I can't compare it. I've I've often thought that the the feeling you get as a, alone in the studio when you know that you've written a good song and you, and I come out of the studio and um, it's a wonderful feeling, but it's very lonely. It's it's an insular moment because there's no one to share it with. So when you then go. Um, on the stage like tonight and you see all these people singing along to the songs that that you've written that youth that i personally thought well yeah that's great but what does it mean if no one else likes it so and then so it's a completely separate thing and i think the two for me the two coexisted the one can't now live without the other and um is there one musical instrument that you ever wanted to play but never did Drums. Drums. Ah, oh, do you know what? I, you know, I'm always getting on Keith, our drummer's drum kit, and you know, trying to play. And uh, it's funny because I just so hopelessly out of time. I will never ever be able to be be able to play drums. I, I'm I'm quite good at um, programming drums and and break beats and things like that and getting good grooves together and coming up with interesting drum patterns and things. But yeah, I just wish I could play drums. Um, I'd like to thank you because it's our first interview where we didn't hear the word saxophone because. Everybody says, <laughs> I want to play saxophone. Oh, that's the one. I, 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 I mean, I might court some controversy here, but <laughs> I cannot stand the saxophone. There, I, there's never been a saxophone on a Pineapple Thief record, and there never will be. I hate the saxophone. <laughs> no, but that's okay. We, we thank you. Yes. <laughs> really. <laughs> um, 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, um, I'm lost. That's right. <laughs> oh, putain. Um... <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm, no I'm really sorry that the I'm I'm not sure we uh, we have no we have, we haven't we have not finished. Um can you because we're in France and can you tell me some little words in France that you know maybe? Oh, do you know it's so embarrassing because English people are so hopeless at speaking French. All I know is Bonjour, bonsoir, je m'appelle Broussard, j'aime jouer le football. You know, that's <laughs> what I used to learn at school. It was like dreadful. It's, it's, we, we are shocking as a nation, the fact that we, that, that, that we think that English, is, everyone should speak English. Because you, you, you can speak better, infinitely better English than I can speak French. It's embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm, I apologise to all our French fans for being a terrible French speaker. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, speaking about French, it's a little dumb question, but uh, do you know a song called L'Orange by Gilbert Beco? No, I don't. No, it, it's a bit lame, but it's a song about someone who supposedly uh, steals an orange. Oh, yeah. So right. So pi pineapple tea for lunch. Can we can we do a duet or is it? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to learn that one for the encore then. <laughs> Maybe it's it's a fun song. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely because we we've, we've got to come back next March. So yeah, all right, I'll learn that. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, to finish, you have 15 seconds to uh, 15. Uh, I think everybody uh, goes. Uh, far uh, than 15 seconds, but if you can try 15, it will be uh, cool. You have 15 seconds to promote whatever you want, which is whatever you want. Well, all I want is to come back and play to the French people again. And um, if everyone enjoyed the gig tonight or enjoys our albums, please speak, get us back to play France because it was wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Bruce. You seem to have re really love France and uh, the gig tonight. Yeah. So it's a pleasure for us to, to have you. talk with you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And sorry for the lag. Uh, the That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay? Yeah. C'est bon. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can... Well, I can hopefully see you again. Yeah. yeah I can So the future is bright for progressive music. Yeah, definitely.